Welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll venture into the fascinating life and times of Leonardo da Vinci, a celebrated Italian Renaissance polymath who enjoyed rocking the worlds of art, architecture, engineering, and science. Join us as we unravel the astonishing discoveries and creations housed within his mysterious notebooks scribbled in that unique mirror script. From the lady with an ermine to the legendary Mona Lisa, We'll explore the diverse range of Leonardo's artwork, his innovative techniques, and the lasting impact he had on future generations. Along the way, we'll also dive into some of his lesser-known accomplishments, like his personal library and his daring experiments with aerial perspective and red chalk drawings. Fasten your seatbelts as we uncover the thrilling pursuit of knowledge during the Renaissance era, and how one man's divine left hand left an indelible mark on mankind's understanding of art, architecture, and scientific inquiry. Regarded as one of history's most brilliant minds, Leonardo's approach to learning encompassed everything from anatomy to mechanics, fusing both theory and practice of any topic. In essence, by blending the talents of an artisan with those of a scholar, Leonardo illustrated the advantages of a novel approach to comprehending the world around him and to successfully creating new and astonishing things for future generations. Born on April 15, 1452 CE, Leonardo was the illegitimate son of a lawyer from Vinci, a town near Florence. He was an exceptionally talented child, particularly in music and drawing, leading to his enrollment as an apprentice in Andrea del Verrocchio's workshop by 1464 CE. Other noteworthy future artists, such as Sandro Botticelli and Pietro Perugino, were also present in the workshop. Here, Leonardo learned to excel in sketching and painting techniques whilst being exposed to the latest trends, including the integration of classical ornamental details. It is possible that his first contribution to Renaissance art was the kneeling angel in Verrocchio's Baptism of Christ painting. After completing his apprenticeship in 1472 CE, Leonardo served as a paid assistant to Verrocchio and was registered as a master in Florence's Painters Guild. Leonardo's interests went far beyond art, encompassing various aspects of the physical world. He delved into architecture, engineering, geometry, perspective, mechanics, and hydraulics to comprehend their inner workings and visual appearances. He didn't neglect the natural world either, exploring anatomy, botany, zoology, and geology. Throughout his life, Leonardo maintained notebooks detailing his investigations and innovative ideas. These included designs for cranes, paddle wheel boats, tanks, cannons, underwater breathing apparatus, and even flying machines. The main component missing in many of these designs was an internal combustion engine, which wouldn't be invented for several centuries. His notebooks also featured sketches many of which are considered miniature masterpieces, with the Vitruvian man drawing being perhaps the most famous. Leonardo's notebooks also housed his thoughts on painting techniques and observations of natural phenomena that he found valuable for artists. As he once stated, a painter is not admirable unless he is universal, acknowledging that mastery takes time and that impatience is the mother of stupidity. These notes and treatises undoubtedly contributed to Leonardo's role as a mentor to young artists in his own workshop. An intriguing aspect of these writings is that many are composed in mirror script, meaning they are written in the reverse direction compared to standard handwriting. In addition to his numerous notebooks, Leonardo amassed a remarkable personal library which, by 1503 CE, held 116 books on topics such as medieval and Renaissance medicine religion, and mathematics. His collection featured groundbreaking works like Natural History by Pliny, Geography by Ptolemy I, and On Warfare by Roberto Volturio. Furthermore, Leonardo displayed an interest in languages, particularly Latin, which he sought to learn independently to read medieval manuscripts in their original form. His notebooks contain extensive lists of Latin words. Leonardo's multifaceted talents are further exemplified through his position with Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan. After moving to the city in 1482 CE, 
Leonardo became the primary military and naval engineer for Sforza, as well as the master painter and sculptor. Leonardo additionally designed inventive automata for Ludovico's festivals, including moving planets with their corresponding gods inside. Leonardo worked on a colossal bronze equestrian statue of Francesco Sforza, the empire's founder, but the project never progressed past the terracotta model phase, a common pattern for many of his incomplete works. Sketches remain, highlighting the general structure and Leonardo's efforts to determine the best method for creating and transporting massive bronze pieces for the final assembly. Leonardo also painted Ludovico Sforza's mistress, Cecilia Gallerani, in his work titled The Lady with an Ermine from 1490 CE. However, his most significant accomplishment during his 17-year stay in Milan was the Last Supper mural. It was during this time, specifically in the 1490s CE, that Leonardo developed the innovative medium of red chalk drawings on treated paper. Many surviving examples of these drawings exist, including a famous self-portrait depicting the long-bearded artist in his older years. In 1500 CE, Leonardo made a trip to Venice, where he created an erotic interpretation of the leader and the swan tail from Greek mythology, which has since been lost but sketches still remain. He was later employed in Rome in 1502 CE, working on canal projects for statesman Cesar Borgia. Leonardo also created maps of the city and nearby regions, as well as designed improvements for harbors. His renowned map from 1502 CE, depicting every building in Imola from an aerial perspective with precise scaling, was the first of this kind. By 1503 CE, he had returned to Florence to draft a mural depicting a battle scene for the council hall, illustrating the Battle of Anghiari in 1449 CE between the forces of Florence and Milan. Around this time, he finally completed the now famous Mona Lisa portrait, which he had been working on intermittently. In 1517 CE, Leonardo relocated to France, where his talents were recognized and appreciated by Francis I, a noted patron of Renaissance artists and architects. Leonardo was specifically invited to participate in the early design stages of the Chateau de Chambord, built between 1519 and 1547 CE along the Loire River. Though solid evidence is scarce, the Chateau's innovative double spiral staircase is often attributed to him. His final artistic creation, the 1515 CE painting Saint John the Baptist, was completed before he shifted his focus towards scientific inquiry in the latter part of his life. Leonardo passed away at his French residence on May 2, 1519 CE, and was laid to rest in the chapel of Saint Hubert. The wide-ranging and diverse array of work that Leonardo left behind has continued to astonish historians and critics since his death. Leonardo's artwork left a significant impact on his contemporaries during the Renaissance due to his exceptional command over composition and illumination, the contrapposto stance of his characters, and the sheer inventiveness and diversity of his pieces. At the same time, it is accurate to acknowledge that certain aspects of Leonardo's creations were so refined and detailed that only a handful of artists had the potential to replicate them. Back then, as it is today, his art was profoundly appreciated but not entirely grasped by all. However, those with the perceptive eye could recognize its true essence. For example, Leonardo's work depicting the Battle of Anghiari inspired eminent artists such as Raphael, who held in high regard the vivid portrayal of a humanity caught in a seemingly suspended moment in time. This is just one instance of the master's influence, a single outcome of what mathematician and frequent collaborator Luca Piscioli referred to as the divine left hand. Leonardo's reputation even reached the shores of Constantinople, with the Ottoman Empire's Sultan Basiv II inviting him to his court, an invitation that ultimately proved unsuccessful. It wasn't until after 1570 CE that Leonardo's notebooks were published, leaving a lasting impact not only due to their theories on painting and his schematic illustrations on perspective, but also for their role in the pursuit and dissemination of knowledge more broadly. Leonardo's unique approach to depicting subjects, utilizing cross-sections, perspective, precise scaling, 
and multiple viewpoints, would go on to have a significant impact on architectural draftsmanship and the development of scientific diagrams. Above all, Leonardo demonstrated that the fusion of practice and theory was not only possible but also indispensable. The brilliant master showcased in his own persona that comprehensive expertise in any field necessitated an amalgamation of the artisan's abilities, the ingenuity and inventiveness of an artist, and the thorough investigation and logical thinking of an academic. As a result, the approach to numerous fields, particularly art, architecture, engineering, and science underwent a profound transformation. The Mona Lisa, a portrait of an unidentified woman painted by Leonardo da Vinci between 1503 CE and 1506 CT, rather than simply representing the physical attributes of the subject, the painting endeavors to portray the very ambience and thoughts of the subject at a precise moment, which Leonardo referred to as the motions of the mind. Other techniques involve the implementation of aerial perspective, such as the diminishing color in the distant backdrop of a water-like landscape, and the gradation of color from the top to the bottom of the painting. The lady's relaxed posture and the arrangement of her hands form, with the head at the apex, the classic triangular configuration that many Renaissance artists were experimenting with in their paintings. Light and dark hues are skillfully employed to accentuate the woman's oval face and delicate hands. While the contours of these elements blend convex and concave lines, generating an illusion of flexible movement. Additionally, the three-quarter perspective of the lady creates a sense of motion as she appears to have just turned to face the viewer. The absence of identifying titles and the complete lack of jewellery or other wealth symbols, which were common in portraits until that time, further demonstrate Leonardo's singular interest in presenting a living breathing individual in close connection with the viewer. The piece had an immediate impact, influencing emerging artists like Raphael in his own portrait art, such as in his works Maddalena Strozzi and Baldassar Castiglione. Leonardo must have been quite content with the Mona Lisa, as he kept it in his possession throughout his life. The Last Supper is a portrayal of Jesus Christ's final meal with his apostles, painted by Leonardo on the wall of Santa Maria del Grazi's refectory, a Dominican order residence in Milan. Traditionally, many monastic refectories displayed such a subject, and it is highly probable that Ludovico Sforza commissioned the artwork, as his family's coat of arms can be seen at the top of the mural. The piece was finalized in 1498 CE. The mural's triumph lies in depicting the unique emotional responses of each apostle upon discovering that one among them will soon betray Jesus. As with any notable artwork, the Last Supper has been analyzed in various ways. Some believe that the figure intended to be Saint John the Evangelist, sitting to Jesus' left, represents Mary Magdalene. Despite the great interest in these secondary characters and their significance, the painting's centerpiece is undoubtedly Jesus. His central triangular form, the precise perspective of the background leading the viewer's gaze to the very center of the picture, and the noticeable color contrast of his clothing all demand attention. Further emphasizing the triangular motif, Leonardo arranges the apostles into four distinct groups, their collective forms creating approximate triangles within the composition. In the midst of the energetic commotion and bustling movements of the expressive apostles, Jesus remains a serene and steady anchor amidst a whirlwind of indignation and bewilderment, with both hands placed firmly on the table. The Last Supper's profound impact was largely due to Marcantonio Raimondi's engraving of the artwork, which spread far and wide, grabbing the attention of numerous artists. Regrettably, the painting started to deteriorate just ten years after its completion due to Leonardo's unconventional experimentation with oil paints and tempera on plaster, straying from the more reliable and enduring true fresco technique. This trial and error approach has continually presented restoration challenges for the Last Supper. The mural has also experienced further damage, first by the ill-advised construction of a doorway in the wall which encroaches on the artwork and later during World War II when the building was bombed. The mural was shielded by sandbags, enabling it to withstand the attack, but was exposed to the elements until proper restorations could be completed. 
an extensive restoration project took place in the early 21st century CE, and the artwork is now accessible to the public, with visitation limitations and pre-booking requirements. Leonardo's famed sketch known as the Vitruvian Man, though not a completed masterpiece, has become so iconic that it is often tied to his name. Created in 1492 CE, is now exhibited in the Academia Gallery in Venice. The sketch's name originates from Vitruvius, a Roman architect who famously wrote De Architectura, amalgamates the history of ancient architecture and engineering with his own knowledge and guidance on the subject. The Renaissance era saw a surge in Vitruvius' work's popularity as artists turned to the classical world for ideas and inspiration. In a specific excerpt, Vitruvius suggests that accurate architectural ratios should be based on an examination of human body proportions. This passage portrays a human figure within a circle and a square. Numerous Renaissance artists and architects, intrigued by the possibility of a mysterious and maybe even divine connection between mathematics, the human body, and beauty, endeavored to illustrate what Vitruvius had only explained in writing. Leonardo's Vitruvian man represents one such effort. The center of the circle is the man's navel, and its circumference touches his fingertips and feet. Another male figure, imposed upon the first, resides within a square. This drawing might symbolize humanity's central position in an organized cosmos, and as a result, it has become an emblematic representation of the Renaissance era, along with the continuous search for the precise relationship between religion, science, and art. As an artist, Leonardo da Vinci produced some of the most impactful and memorable pieces in the history of art, and as a scientist and engineer, he pushed the boundaries of knowledge in numerous fields. From his innovative mirror script to his lasting impact on art, architecture, engineering, and science, Leonardo's genius continues to captivate our imagination centuries after his passing. His unquenchable thirst for knowledge and his pursuit of perfection in every aspect of his work serve as a shining example for all who strive to blend the creative, the theoretical, and the practical in their lives. We hope you enjoyed this journey through the life of one of history's greatest minds. If you'd like to learn more about his innovations and discoveries, or if you simply want to enjoy more captivating tales from history, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with fellow history enthusiasts. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more fascinating stories. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of our past and let it inspire your future.